Hey everybody, today I'm going to be talking about an expansion for a dice game I really like, Elder Sign, which is a Cthulhu themed dice game. And the expansion we're talking about today is this one right here, Gates of Arkham, which adds some new uh, cards, a bunch of new little bits, and uh, actually adds a whole new system of play, a whole new mode that uh, does away with a key part of what the game was about and replaces it with a new kind of card let me show you how it works and then I'll come back and I'll tell you what I think. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of how the game works with the new expansion. The first thing you'll notice here is that the adventure deck that you might be used to, which is this adventure deck here, is done away with completely if you're playing with the new expansion and specifically if you're playing with the Streets of Arkham game mode, which is really what, what the expansion highlights is what the expansion brings. Yes, you could just mix in the new card types into these specific piles and just play the old game, but I'm, I'm going to show you the new system. So, once you do that, you're going to set it up three face up, three face down, you're going to add in all the new cards, you're going to be using a brand new deck here, the uh, old one is completely removed, and so you just use this one. There's also this event deck, which will come into play at specific moments, and there's a brand new deck of skill cards, which are these that the players could acquire specific points in the game. Besides that, you have the Sheldon Gang and the uh, Order of the uh, Silver Twilight membership cards up there that the players could become members of those specific factions. The game plays pretty much the same way you're used to. Each player is going to take their little character cardboard square here, which is very easy to lose and you're going to pick where you're going to go. You can go to any of the face-up locations, you already know what you're walking into, or you can go to these face-down locations. The color up here suggests how difficult the game thinks it would be for you to deal with that. So be careful, you know, you don't want to just walk in there with with nothing to back you up. So, um, if you go to one of these, there's also an event down here that you may do. For example, let me see if I can show you this one here. This one says I'm not sure if you can see that there, but it says you may regain one stamina. So if you walk in here, the first thing you'll do is you're going to regain one stamina, and then you'll flip it over. And it is the, uh, it's Vilma's, uh, Velma's Diner, and then you'll flip it over, and there's a guy sitting at a booth in the back, and he is super creepy. So you'll be dealing with him. So that's the way that works. You're um, going to walk into some specific places, that you might know what they are at the beginning, but sometimes you don't know what you're walking into. Once this is resolved, it is removed, and we add the new one face down from the top of the deck. One other new symbol you'll spot here is this symbol right up here, which ties into those new event cards I told you about. These, once you walk in here, you first have to draw one of these and read it. So in this case, a call for aid. One other investigator may move this advent to this adventure. Investigators of this adventure may then freely trade unique and common items, spells, allies, and clues. So that's a good one. Sometimes you get a bad one. Sometimes you don't know what you're walking into. So it throws a little monkey wrench every time you walk into a location that has one of those symbols there. It's very interesting. Besides that, obviously some locations are going to give you the ability to become a member of one of these two factions. And some cards tie into those. Let me see if I can find one here. So this one, for example, if you're a member of the Sheldon Gang, then this line up here is already finished for you. You do not have to do that one. That's great. And then this reward here in the, in the red there is already something you're going to get also. Nobody else gets that unless you're a member of the Sheldon Gang. Something else that could happen in the game is a gate might open up, and this is actually the only way that you're going to get the other world cards to show up in the game. Whenever one of these cards, or maybe an event or something like that, tells you that a gate opens, then you are going to grab two of these symbols, and there are two blue, there are two yellow, and two red, and you are going to grab a pair, you're going to put one on some location of your choice here, and the other one goes on another world gate that enters play face down, and uh, you're not going to know what it is until you walk in there and flip it just the same way you do with these here. You can never go there while this is still on that other world. 
So it kind of starts to shut down the, lo the locations for you, the options you have, and you need to um, deal with them because eventually if all of these three sets are out and you have to open some more, then really bad stuff starts to happen. Lastly, let me talk about these uh, new skill cards. There's some cards that are going to give you these new cards, and I think they're very, very neat because what they do is they give you some event, some power you have pretty much for the rest of the game, and then some power you may use, which is a little bit better, by discarding the card itself. So, for example, um, let's see. Yeah, they typically do that anyway. Luck here says, let me see if I can show you that. Luck says, when you draw an event during your turn, you may draw two events. Instead, choose one event to resolve and discard the other. That one you keep for the rest of the game. Some, like I said, are going to give you a choice. Like this one, Persuasive. Persuasive says, each time you draw an ally, draw uh, two allies instead and choose one to keep. And then you can also discard the card, get rid of this, at any time to draw one ally. So you can keep on being persuasive or you can get rid of it for one big push. So that's basically the game. You're going to work the same way you do in regular um, Elder Sign, walking in there, rolling the dice, uh, you know, pushing your luck to try to get these uh, um, lines finished, becoming a member of these gangs, and so on. But basically, one big thing the game did was change all the powers that used to be on these entrance cards and sort of split them up and spread them among these cards now. So it's a... Uh, you know, the game has sort of a different feel. But that's basically it. Everybody wins or loses together. That's how you play Gates of Arkham. So there you have it. That's a bit of an overview for the new uh, Elder Sign expansion, Gates of Arkham. I have to say, I had already played the first expansion that came out for the game, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. But this new expansion, I think, blows that one out of the water. This is an excellent expansion. And I'll tell you why that is. For me, this is my favorite uh, um, Cthulhu game, and I said that before, because it's the shortest and it's sort of the simplest, but it suffers in the theme department. I really wish the game had a, had a, a stronger theme, and there is so much to draw from there. This expansion gives me that. It, it takes what I like from Eldritch Horror, which is another game in the same line, but a very, very long game with a lot of theme, and it gives me some of that theme back. It lets me feel like I am walking around the city, exploring different places, opening those doors and never knowing what's right behind that door. I love that suspense and mystery in the game. I think it really kicks it up a notch by adding all those little powers to each location instead of having to go back to those entrance cards and doing really big powers there. Instead, you can do small powers everywhere. It really gives you a lot of flexibility. It lets you know if you're walking into something that's difficult or easy. It lets you gauge what you want to do right now. It really rams up the mystery with those old other world gates, you know, and you, you, you're you walking through this gate to another dimension. You don't know what you're walking into. I think that's great. The The adventure aspect of the game has really been elevated to a brand new place and that's why I have to say Gates of Arkham for me is a slam dunk expansion for Elder Sign. If you like the dice game at all and you haven't checked this out you gotta go out and get it. It is the way to play Elder Sign. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.